Welcome to the magnificent Les Invalides. Les Invalides is a building complex with three major parts, the museum area, the church and the dome. In this guide, I will give you the story behind the foundation of Les Invalides. But first of all, I'd like you to take a look at the beautiful northern gate. If you look above the entrance, you will see a Latin inscription. The inscription says, Louis the Great, by his royal generosity for his men, for the continuation of times, founded this building in 1675. In this case, Louis the Great refers to the French ruler Louis XIV. On the left side of the inscription sits the virtue of wisdom and on the right the virtue of justice. In between them you can see an equestrian statue of Louis himself and above his statue you can also see the sun with a human face on it. This is due to the fact that Louis XIV was during his reign commonly known as the Sun King. This whole northern gate is commonly known as Le Roi Soleil, which means just that, the Sun King. On both sides of the gate you can see large statues. To your right you have the Roman warrior goddess and the goddess of wisdom, Minerva, accompanied by her owl. On your left, you can see the Roman god of war, Mars, accompanied by his wolf companion. Now, let's talk some more about the history of Les Invalides. The name Les Invalides is actually shortened from Hospital des Invalides, meaning the hospital for the invalids. As hinted by its full name, the building complex was originally built as a large hospital for soldiers who had been wounded and injured during war. As the gate told you with its Latin inscription, the hospital was initiated by Louis XIV on November 24th of 1670. During the construction phase, Louis enlarged the project and added more structures around the original few. The first soldiers moved into the buildings as early as 1674 and the complex was officially opened in 1675. When it all stood completed in 1676, the complex had 15 courtyards and the front towards the river measured a massive 196 meters. It still stands as grand as ever with the massive Esplanade des Invalides to the north. The military hospital was included in the southeast part of the complex, which was the place where soldiers who were badly injured were treated. The other parts of Les Invalides, except the church and the dome structure, served more as a hotel where soldiers who had been injured but who could still live a somewhat normal life lived. For this reason, Hospital des Invalides is also sometimes known as Hotel des Invalides. During the end of the 17th century, Les Invalides housed a total of 4,000 soldiers. The lives of the former soldiers were much like their previous life in the barracks, as they were divided into companies and still wore uniforms. However, instead of getting military training, they worked together in workshops making items such as uniforms and shoes. The project became an example to follow for many other European countries, which soon afterwards also opened homes for injured soldiers. When going through the North Gate, you will enter the largest of Les Invalides' 15 courtyards, the Corte d'Honneur. It was in this courtyard the larger military parades were held. If you look at the south side of the courtyard, towards the church and the dome, you will see that Napoleon Bonaparte still watches over his troops, even though he is a bit taller than we're used to seeing him 
and made entirely out of bronze. Today, a large part of Les Invalides is dedicated to museums, the most famous one being the Musée de l'Armée, the Army Museum. This museum was opened in 1905 and is considered one of the greatest art and military museums in the world. The fact that the museum itself is located at the heart of a large historical site offers an exceptional aspect to it which few other museums can match.